I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies. I'm here today to talk about the new Martin Inferno 33 from Martin Archery for 2016. Now this is a new bow from Martin. Uh, Martin Archery has been around for years and what they've done with this bow is they've completely redesigned the whole Martin concept. Now, I've just been on the phone today with Martin with the general manager Scott and he was explaining to me a bit about this bow so I'm going to relay that to you so you understand a bit, bit about it. Before I do that I want to go back through a bit of Martin history. Martin's been around for ages. Back when I started shooting when I was 13, so 1983, Martin was probably the biggest bow company in the, in the world. Um, they had a lot of the top shooters shooting for them and basically they had a huge range of bows. In 2015 Martin got hit with fire in the factory and they lost their manufacturing plant and basically that slowed their production. I think 2015 for Martin, I think their bows they had a huge range of bows and they had the Martin Krypton which is extremely successful for me, uh, the Afflictor which is a really really good bow and the Lithium which we're going to go through in a sec. But the Condor, some really really good bows, really price competitive but they had some problems last year and they were new off the line, Martin was trying to get this in, they had new people come to the factory from PSE and around the place, new engineers and I think they kind of rushed the bows into production and it's not that the bows were bad because I actually think they were really good it's just they had a few problems with strings um, and what Martin have done in 2016 they've said let's forget about 2015 let's drop all those bows and let's make a brand new bow so everything on this bow is really not Martin and when I say not Martin is obviously Martin but it's completely different the process is different you see this um, camo in 2015 and all previous years so this is the Martin Lithium Pro which I really like really smooth bow to shoot um, bridge riser this is a film dip process so the camo on this is filmed is a dip so you basically put in a bath and the film um, adheres to the riser Now what happens over time that film will kind of wear off the bow a lot of bow companies use that Martin's not doing it this year and I said to Martin I said today to Scott I said your camo this year looks really really good it's like you've sort of stepped it up it's like really hard it's a very very hard finish the quality is it just looks it looks as good as anything I've ever seen he said Stephen I'm glad you picked that up he said it's a different process this year he said this is a baked on fusion process and I was like fusion I know what that is this company, Prime, they do it. So, and there's whole videos, and you'll see the finish on that and the finish on this is almost identical. And that's because it's the same process, basically. It's not done in house in Martin, it's done by, by an external firm. And I'm not going to say it's done by Prime because I don't know it, but to me, it looks like a Prime. Um, the finish is fantastic the limbs are a baked on process as well now with when they do the camo finish on limbs if it's a solid limb they can't if it's a laminated limb they can't bake the the transfers on this is a solid limb produced in america by gordon glass which is the company who produces most of the limbs in the industry so these are standard limbs produced for basically most of the bone manufacturers and if you're going to bake the transfers on this process the fusion process it has to be a solid limb because it's of a laminated limb like the Hoyts they will delaminate in the process because of the heat so that's the first thing so the paint finish in 2016 is completely different than 2015 in the past years this is a more expensive process and this bow is more expensive than last year so lithium last year sold for around eight eight nine hundred dollars Australian this bow, the Inferno, is going to be around the $1,100 and I'm like, oh boy, that's expensive for a Martin, right? So now, this is where this comes into it. Is this bow worth $1,100? Um, are people going to pay $1,100 for this bow? Because this puts it right at the top end of the bracket. So, I'm going to go through all this. But, so when I'm thinking about this, when I see a new new product out, I go, is it going to sell? How well is it going to sell? And then I talk to people, 
I give it to customers to shoot. I go, what do you think of this bow? How's it shoot? Would you pay this for this product? Compared to everything else I have in my shop, and I've got a massive range of products in my shop. This is the Prime Alloy, um, top of the line Prime. This bow is about $1,400. So the Martin is about $1,100. Now they're both top of the line products. The Prime has the dual track cam system. Now this has got a dual track yoke system. And I'm gonna explain this in a little bit. What the Prime does by the, running the dual tracks is tries to eliminate the cam lean. So when you draw back your bow, the cams will try and tilt to the side as the pressure's increased and decreased. What Martin have done with this track system, they've got a yoke on this side. So as you draw this back, it's rolling off of this part and it's rolling on here. And you have the two yokes there and there. So that, that way it's even as you draw it drawing back. So you should theoretically get no cam lean with this bow because the track here is in the middle and the yokes are in the middle. Now I said to PSE when Prime first produced their dual track cam, I said that's a cool design because it stops the cam lean. Why haven't you done it? And PSE goes, um, Pete Shepley said to me, look over there and there's an old PSE back from the 1975s and there's a dual track PSE there. He said, we went away from it because it increases the weight on the outer here and that slows down the bow. Now the new Martin engineer, he said, well, I like the idea of the dual, the dual track system and the, you know, the concept of no cam lean. So I'm going to redesign it. And what he did is he put the cam in the middle and they put yokes either side. Now this here, this system where it rolls on and rolls off is used by companies like Elite. So it's a very... I'm going to say it's a fairly standard system. You know, Bowtech used to use it, and they may still use it. Um, I don't see a lot of Bowtechs <laughs> anymore um, in Australia. Um, so I don't have a lot to do with Bowtech now. So, But they used to use this type of system here where it rolls off and rolls on the same track. So it used to be called a binary cam system or a um, twin cam. They had a couple of names. But anyway, it's the type, same type of type system that... Elite and those companies use. This is module based, so the modules screw on here and you can change the draw length on the Inferno from 26 to about 30 and a half inches in draw length, but you need a bow press to do it because you'll see the can, the yokes here on here are actually connected to the module. So you need a bow press to do this, um, to change the modules. Now I spoke to Martin about this cam system and they said last year they they wanted to change their cams to this to give the give the company a new look, and they changed the you know they've changed the paint they've changed the finish to really vamp up the bow, to make the bow sort of top class, but making a bow expensive and using expensive components and using expensive cams because this is an expensive cam to make, increases the cost. So when I compare the Martin now for 2016 to a 2015 it's a completely different beast and it's more expensive it's more expensive by about three to two hundred dollars but you're getting the better paint which will never wear you're getting a better cam system and you're not going to get the same wear on your cables that you got last year um, because basically there's no no wear points on on these cams you know it's a nice smooth system here so there's no points where this is going to wear so for me it's interesting. Now the next point on this bow is this here. And I said to Martin, I said, what's this all about? And I'm not talking about the rubber things. The rubber things are to, to um, absorb shock. I said, were you going to pivot off the center here like Bowtech do? So put a pivot in the center. And you know, basically change your mind in the last minute. Um, yeah, maybe they did and maybe they didn't. But he said, no, what we've done, what the engineer did when he designed this bow, he said, generally bows, all the energy um, resonates towards the hand grip and it comes out through the stabilizer and that's why your stabilizers have got absorbers and all stuff inside it to absorb the shock of the bow. What this engineer did, he wanted to move the, the vibration away from the handle, away from the stabilizer and up to this point here. So this here is to absorb shock and vibration. Now my thing is, does it work or doesn't it work? And we're going to shoot in a sec to see if it does or doesn't. But by adding this on, you've actually increased the weight of the bow. And the weight of this bow, um, 
with the bits on it here I think it weighed a little bit over five pounds so it's really really quite a heavy bow now heavy bows are more inclined to be hunting and sorry target bows than hunting bows so to me this was like very much a 3d 3d someone who's not walking around a lot to shoot this sort of bow so some other features about this bow you've got draw stops here now these are not limb stops these are cable stops so as you draw it back this comes and touches the cables top and bottom um, draw links is just by module so you need to buy modules to adjust it um, and other quick points it's got a draw stop here the two yokes um, and that's about it now I want to compare some other bows so the lithium from last year this the Inferno for 2016 is far improved in quality over the 2015 model. Um, I like the 2015 model. The 2015 is very, very smooth to shoot. Um, and the question is, for the extra dollars which the Inferno is, is it a better bow? So and we're going to sort of shoot this. So I'm going to shoot through some speed machines because what I find is people tend to bow companies tend to lie a bit about their speeds and I always shoot the same arrow through all my bows and what I've done is I've picked bows who are meant to have the same IBO speed as this. This is an IBO of 333 and I picked the Matthews Z2 um, which we tested last week which had a speed of 270 and that's meant to have a 330 and I've also checked the Prime we're going to run through a speed machine and I'll probably run the chill as well. And these are all the like, chills are 340 feet per second bow against the um, Martin and so see how it shoots. So I'm going to shoot at a distance as well to see how this groups without a stabilizer at you know 18 meters. Um, so let's get into the next stage. Thank you. Okay, we're outside to try the new Martin Inferno. Now, some things about the Inferno, which I haven't already mentioned. When I spoke to Scott from Martin, I said, what bow were you trying to build when you built this Inferno? And he said a hunting bow, and he said, we wanted to come in at four pounds. Now, I came in at higher than that when it was finally built, because I said, I'd like to see this bow lighter in physical weight. Because to me, I like light hunting bows for you know running around the bush. Um, and this did come in heavy. Now, Scott said to me, he said, the heaviness actually gives it more stability and absorbs more shock and it does it, it makes you steadier to aim and it does it it does absorb more shock but I would still prefer this bow in a forged riser which is reduces the weight of the bow but saying that he said we wanted to cre create a very smooth drawing bow the smoothest drawing bow we could and we wanted to produce a quiet bow and the other bows we're going to compare it with to me they kind of fit in that comparison so is this the smoothest bow made we'll, we'll try it out um, and we'll see how the noise compares so let's take a few shots I've got a speed machine here um, it's still got the last speed of 270 which was shot with the Z2 these are gold tip arrows I think they're 330 but I'll put that down the bottom a gold tip velocity pro 400s with target points are so a 90 grain target point and this bow set on 55 pounds and it's 28 and a half inch draw length so which is what I shoot on all my bows and these are all these bows I shoot should be around that sort of draw length so let's just draw this bow back now to me the grip is different with the Martin because it's kind of curved here and last year I'm going to say the grip was a little bit different last year I could be wrong but to me the style of this grip encourages it to heal the bow like like so so you're kind of encouraged to put your grip down now with the Matthews bow you're encouraged to kind of shoot with a more of a high grip I find so you know you've got to become comfortable with your bow um, and I've been shooting a high grip lately and to me this bow doesn't feel comfortable with the high grip so we're going to just shoot a couple of shots so I'm drawing drawing back so here it's a solid draw it's not hard getting a valley now valley 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 and it's not a big valley okay it's not big it's it's comfortable and I draw it back it's solid but it's not a thump wall normally when you draw back a bow it draws I'm going to take the shot now that shot at 271 feet per second 
So a lot of bows, you draw back and it hits the peak and that just drops off. This is not like this. This is smooth right the way through. So the anchor is not as easy as some, but it's not wanting to rip out of your shoulder either. You know, if you were to let the bow down, to me there's no issue here with drawing this bow. It's almost like drawing back a round wheel bow. And it's very similar in style to an elite bow to shoot. It's very similar to the prime to shoot. The chill's got a bigger valley. So it's not a bad bow to draw. There's no vibration in it. And it's very, and that's 270 as well. So I'm getting this about the same speed as the Matthew Z2 out of this bow. So not lightning fast, nice, no shock, and very, very quiet. So overall, I like this bow. I just want to have a couple of shots with the other bows and see how it compares to see if this bow is better. And then I'd like to shoot at the longer distance as well to see how I group with it. But overall, is it quiet? Yeah, it's extremely quiet. This is going to be a solid bow. There's going to be no paint come off this bow. In five years time, this is going to be, it's going to look like the day you brought it. So that's a good thing. Um, very easy to draw. It's an easy bow to shoot. You're not likely to have any problems with this bow. So that's a good thing. Draw length is not, is harder to adjust than in previous years. So bear that in mind, but we'll shoot the other bows now and just have a look how they go. So this is the prime alloy. I really like the Prime, it's nice and light, um, forged riser, um, you can't adjust the draw length on these, the price on this is more expensive than the Martin, but still it's a nice bow, the grip's comfortable. that bow so this is a 330 feet per second bow as well and that shot at 270 as well so identical feet per second how does this bow feel compared to the martin feels pretty much identical like it's lighter in the shot i actually like the grip it's got a rubber grip on it which i, I like it's lighter but i've got no draw length adjustment i can't adjust the draw length on it um feels pretty good um it's more expensive it's about 300 dollars more expensive than the Martin, but the cam system feels pretty much identical to the Martin to draw, to shoot, to hold. The noise, I think, is pretty much the same. To me, I really can't pick the difference between these two bows, except for the grip and There's a little bit more string vibration in the end um, and that's because their limbs don't have as much compression on it but like it's pretty good and like I said the speed's pretty much the same so we'll have another couple we'll have a shot with another one now this one's my chill so I shoot this one this is a chill R um, I would have done a review on this at some stage a long time ago um, it's a nice bow to shoot um, price point on this is probably going to be about the 1500 Australian I've got them on special for about 1100 just to clear them. So you draw it back and about here you hit a valley and you know you're in the valley because it feels like you're holding nothing in it. If you see I, I draw it back it rocks a little bit. Now Matthews has got rock mods to fix that up. I'm going to shoot the shot. 287 that shot shot out in speed. So a little bit quicker and I'll just shoot one more. So to me the the bow's lighter, it's about a four pound bow. The Martin is about a five pound. All set up. The grip's different. It's more spongy when I'm back here. Now, it feels slower, that was a 285. It feels slower than the Martin, but it's actually not. It's about 15 feet per second faster. Draw on this, the chill shoot, draw very, very smooth. So to me, it's a compar comparable bow. Um, the noise is pretty comparable. So, and this has a powder coat finish on it. And the camos, I think on this are a film finish. They are a film. So they are a film. Um, so the Martin's got a more expensive process on it. And they're black and this is a powder coat. So, I mean, they're all great bows. And with the Martin, we're gonna shoot some distance with it. 
it's a you know they've really aimed at the top end and I think that produced a top end bow the question is is it going to shoot at 18 meters you know is it going to be able to shoot tight spots I mean I have no question it will because it's got everything in it to enable that to occur but let's just jump indoors and we'll shoot some indoor with it okay I'm here at 18 meters to shoot the Martin Inferno um, I've been shooting quite a bit lately so let's just sort of see how it goes Now I don't have a peep sight and one of the things about this bow, the camo I asked Martin about, I said why would you pick this camo, it's not a common camo and they said this camo is big wing clothing and it's going to be bigger this year with lots of accessory manufacturers producing this camo so The bow is really, really comfortable to shoot, and it's not to say the Prime or the others aren't. All bows are pretty good, and they're well made these days. So, but this is just like easy, it aims really well in the center. That hit the arrow. General, standard. So, I like this bow to shoot. I'm shooting the expression all the time. This doesn't hurt my shoulder to shoot. And I'm getting a fair bit of shoulder wear because I'm shooting so many arrows. So we're going to run down to the target and see where those arrows went. Um, so I think Martin made a mistake with his camo. And no disrespect to Martin because it's their choice. But to me, I was going with a plain mossy oak, real tree sort of camo. Um, so there's the arrows there in the target. Now that's 18 meters. I've got three here close, really well, you know, touching three arrows down low. And I haven't sighted this bow in. I've got one high. Now the reason I'm going to get high is because I don't have a peep sight, so I'm not lining up my peep with the sky powers, so I'm getting a little bit of fluctuation higher low. Overall though, like those three arrows, Open pins, no stabilizers, is awesome accuracy. I'd like to try it in the target version, which is 35 inches, which is made right now. This bow is produced in black, which is what I would buy. I'd, it's not that I'd mind this camo, I think the camo looks cool. Customers have liked this bow to shoot. Um, so overall, it's, fan, like, it's a really nice bow. I think it's as good as the other bows, and it is cheaper for a similar product. So I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies. Enjoy your archery. That's the Modern Inferno. Thank you. Bye.